al Dari then mentions the next section which in which he's going to talk about the things that are permissible for a person who doesn't, I mean the things that are not permissible, uh, meaning that they're haram for a person to do when they don't have, when they're not in the state of wudu. So he says, Faslun la mutawaddi. It is not permissible for a person who is not in the state of wudu to make salatun wala tawafun. It is not permissible for a person to make salat, to pray, nor to make tawaf around the Kaaba. Wala masu nuskhat al Quran al Azim. And it is not permissible for a person to touch. Here he uses the word nuscha. Nuscha means it's not permissible for him to touch a complete Quran. What do you mean by a, a complete Quran? A Quran in which everything is present. All of its ayats and all of its verses are, 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 are compiled together. This is what we mean by nuscha til Quran al Adim. Wala jildiha. The word Arabic, the Arabic word for jild is actually uh, is skin. But what do they mean here? The book cover. So it is not permissible for a person to pray, touch, uh, touch the, I mean to make tawaf around the Kaaba, or to touch a Quran and or to touch the cover of it. So touching the cover of the Quran is is the same as touching the Quran in that it's not permissible. La biyadihi wa la biyudihi, and it is not permissible for him to touch it with his hand or to touch it with a stick. According to the Hanafis, if they touch it with a stick, then it's okay. According to the Maliki Methab, in the Malu bin Niyat, all actions are according to Niyat. So intending something is like doing it in reality according to our Methab. Based on the Asul of Imam Malik, intending to do something is like doing it. So in our Methab, La biyadihi, it is not permissible to touch it with his hand, nor is it permissible to touch it with a stick, aw nahwihi, to touch it with a stick or anything like that, like a pen or a pencil, because a person who is doing that has the intention of touching the Quran. And so the intention is the same. But then al Akhdari is going to make an exception to the rule, and he says, إِلَّا الْجُزْ أَمِنْهَا الْمُتَعَلَّمَ فِيهِ Except a juz of the Quran in, in which, uh, which is being used for studying. What does he mean by here? First, he says that a person can't touch a complete Quran, but then he makes an exception for a person to touch a section of the Quran. What does to touch a section of the Quran here? Meaning a Quran that's not complete. So if you have a Quran and you remove Surah Al-Fatiha, we call this a juz. What al akhdari here means by juz doesn't mean one of the 30 juz. It just means a Quran that's not complete. So if a person is studying it and he has the niyyah of studying it, so uh, all that matters is that a person has the intention that he's studying it or that he's reviewing it or that he's memorizing it or that he's practicing his tajweed, then it's permissible for him to touch a, a, a section of the Quran, meaning an incomplete Quran, even if he doesn't have wudu. And this is a rukhsa in the Maliki Method. This is why it says, إِلَّا الْجُزْءَ مِنْهَا الْمُتَعَلَّمَ فِيهِ Except a section or a non-complete Quran in which uh, a person is using to study. And then he goes on to say, وَلَا مَسْحُ اللَّوْحِ الْقُرْآنِ الْعَظِيمِ عَلَىٰ غَيْرِ الْوُدُوءِ إِلَّا لِمُتَعَلِّمٍ فِيهِ أَوْ مُعَلِّمٍ يُصَحِّهُهُ He then says that it's not permissible for a person to touch a lawh that has the Qur'an. A lawh is what we call the wooden tablet, which is what they use in Mauritania to memorize Qur'an on. It's a wooden plate in which they write on. And so as long as there's Qur'an written on there, al Khdari mentions here that it's not permissible for a person to touch it because it takes the same rule as a Qur'an itself. But then there's an exception to the rule. He says, إِلَّا لِمُتَعَلِّمٍ فِيهِ Except the person who's studying from it. Or مُعَلِّمٌ يُسَاحِهُهُ Or a teacher who uh, is correcting the law. Because the tradition, for example, in Mauritania in West Africa, which is still preserved, is that a student will write out his lesson on the on the on the wooden tablet and then take it to his teacher uh, for correction before he starts memorizing it. If we were to say that as as uh, the teacher has to be in the state of wudu before he touches it, then that's going to be difficult because if he's teaching all day, then that means he has to be in the state of wudu all day. And so, because the ayah of the Quran mentions that. Only the purified, only the purified ones can touch it. Illa mutatahirun, illa mutatahirin. It mentions in the ayah that I mean, according to the scholars, there's a difference of opinion. Doesn't mean the angels 
because they're the mutatahirin or does it mean a person who's in the state of wudu? So because there's difference of opinion in the meaning of the ayat, the ayat itself is open for interpretation, so there's room for making a dispensation. So in the Maliki method, if a person is intending us to be to review the Quran, even if he's not a student of knowledge. There's nothing in the Maliki Method that says that he has to be labeled a student of knowledge. No, he just has to have the intention of studying the Quran. As long as he has as long as he has the intention of studying the Quran or studying his law, or I mean or he's a teacher or a student and he wants to touch the 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 wooden tablet, then it's permissible for him to do so. Now we have another issue that comes up that Allah Dari is going to mention, and that's the rule of children touching the Qur'an. Now the problem is, is that according to the, according to the usul of fiqh, a child is not responsible for, for the sharia, meaning that he can't obtain a sin. So if it's not permissible for a child to touch the Qur'an and he touches it, then who takes the sin? Because the child himself can't take the sin, but it's not permissible to give children the Quran because uh, they're not in the state of wudu. So Al Akhdari says, Was fi mesul Qurani kal kabir. The child, in terms of touching the Quran, takes the same rule as the kabir. Make a note here the word kabir he, here means mukallaf. The word kabir here doesn't mean a big person. That's what it means literally, but what he's intending here is that the person, uh, uh, al-mukallaf. So, the sabi fi mesil qur'ani kal kabir. That the ruling of the child in terms of touching the Qur'an is the rule of the, uh, of the bigger person. And, but he says, وَالْإِثْمُ عَلَى مُنَاوِلِهِ لَهُ But the one who takes the sin is the one who gives the child the Qur'an or allows him to touch it. So the one who takes the sin is the one who gives the child the Qur'an or allows him to touch it. And so that's the rule regarding a child touching the Qur'an. Then he says, وَمَنْ صَلَّ بِغَيْرِ وُدُوءٍ عَامِدًا فَهُوَ كَافِرٌ وَعِيَاذُ بِاللَّهِ Here uh, Al-Akhtari talks about another matter where he says, وَمَنْ صَلَّ بِغَيْرِ وُدُوءٍ Whoever was to pray without wudu intentionally, then he is considered to be a disbeliever, meaning he's a murtad. He goes outside of the deen of Islam. And we ask Allah to seek refuge from, from, from ever committing disbelief. Now, the reason why a person commits disbelief is because there's a rule. And the rule is a person who makes a halal haram. And what do we mean by halal haram? We're talking about a halal here that is agreed upon or that is established by a, a, by a nas of the Quran, like wudu, for example, a person who considers it, a person who makes permissible what Allah has made haram, commits kufr because that's like rejecting the message uh, and, the, and the orders of Allah, which constitutes disbelief. So we have two different types of ways a person can do that. A person can either do that by action or he can do that by his tongue. So a person can say, for example, Wudu is not obligatory in the religion. Our prayer is not obligatory in the religion. And then a person can do that by, by, by action. Right? By action would mean that a person would intentionally pray without wudu, knowing that it's obligatory. So by him doing that action, he's like a person who's indirectly saying that uh, ablution is not, uh, is not obligatory in the deen. And therefore, he commits disbelief. Like, for example, a person who was asked, is prayer obligatory? And he took his finger up and he waved in the sky. No, he waved it back and forth as an indication that it's not obligatory. Then this person commits disbelief as long as his intention was to negate the fact that prayer is obligatory.